Crowfeather stretched in the dappled shade of the forest trees, letting out a soft purr as his paws spread out over the soft grass of the glade. It had been a long time since he had properly been hunting out in the forest. Not that the small glade he sat in could really be considered a forest, compared to Moss Clan's thick, leafy territory. Still, it felt good to be among the greenery and away from the ever-present waves, though his enjoyment came with a tinge of guilt at the thought of Sea Whisper and the kits back in the caves. Not that he had wandered away without a purpose, that is. And right now, he wasn't the only Branch Clan cat in the glade, either. After the incident with the Death Fish, Branch Star had declared that more of the warriors needed to be skilled in hunting on land, as well as fishing in the water. No one had yet seen another one of those strange, deadly black fish, but it was always a good idea to secure prey from more than one area at a time. Though, Crowfeather couldn't help but think that perhaps the Branch Clan leader's suggestion of a patrol through the bushy glade near the ruins was perhaps as much for some peace and quiet as it was for training. The many, many kits of Branch Clan were all growing well. They all had sleek fur and fat stomachs from the fish that Branch Clan snagged out of the waters. And with that growth, they also had abundant curiosity and an increasingly noisy resistance to being hemmed inside the nursery by the queens. The entire clan had begun vying for the opportunity to escape the caves to fish, and Crowfeather had thought the queens would come to blows over who would get the honor, and peace and quiet, of going to the gathering before Dawnstep had suggested a shell game to decide which lucky queen would go. It had taken no prompting to get volunteers for the forest hunting party. Though Crowfeather had felt slightly guilty at the way his heart had fluttered like an excited bird, at the thought of walking under the forest leaves again, he frowned and pushed through the bushes ahead of him, his thoughts turning to the hurt, distant look in Lion Star's eyes, the night of the gathering, and how much he missed his mentor and friend. What was the right thing to do? Perhaps he should... Crowfeather let out a startled hiss as he pushed past another bush and tripped over a furry body, which also let out a startled hiss of its own in return. There was a moment of thrashing limbs and branches, but as the leaves settled, both cats stood facing one another, panting with surprise and stray leaves floating down from the bushes above them, but neither had drawn claws or scratched one another. You! Crowfeather meowed, surprised. Apparently, his own forest hunting skills were rusty. He hadn't scented or heard the cat in front of him at all, which was especially not good, considering the cat was a stranger. Or, well, at least as good as a stranger. Who are you again? Batram? Bartham? Bartram, the ivory gray cat sputtered, his surprise fading with a glint of amusement. He pulled back and licked one paw, drawing it casually over his ear, though he kept his eyes locked on Crowfeather. I, er, uh, was just stretching my legs, Bartram meowed, his voice carrying a hint of uncertainty. I, uh, am visiting with Moss Clan at the moment, and so... Bartram hesitated for a moment, then turned and licked his side hastily, buying himself a few seconds before turning back to Crowfeather with a flicker of interest in his eyes. In any case, I could have sworn I was on Moss Clan territory, as their guest. This is part of their forest, is it not? What are you doing here? Crowfeather huffed softly to himself, but couldn't help but smile, surprised to see a Moss Clan cat, or at least a Moss Clan guest, pop up out of the bushes. It was almost like talking to one of the Moss Clan cats themselves outside of a gathering, and it had been so long. Oh, this glade is usually Moss Clan territory. I mean... Crowfeather blinked in surprise, feeling slightly confused as he thought the matter over himself. I mean, well, we used to come here, at least back when I was in Moss Clan. But lately, we've not scented any cats. Well, we being Branch Clan, I suppose. And then Branch Star said that he wanted to come train in this area, and... Crowfeather trailed away for a moment, the realization of just what Branch Clan was doing in this territory suddenly opening up a confusing hole of worms for him. The black and white cat hesitated for a moment, caught up in his thoughts, 
then jumped as he heard the faraway call of Wildpaw, crowing out in excitement as she chased something. Crowfeather shook himself and glanced back at Bartram, a flicker of excitement still beating in his chest like a trapped butterfly. Here, you'd better go. Branch Clan is training here right now, and Branch Star is a bit more strict with them, guest, than Lion Star is. Oh! Crowfeather jumped to his feet, excitement still tingling in his paws. But wait a second, I have something Honeywish might be able to use. I heard at the gathering she just had kits. I wasn't able to say, well, I just, I just want to wish her well. So could you give her this for me? Crowfeather ducked behind a bush quickly, darting to one of the small personal catches of prey he had in the bushes, and darted back with a rainbow snail carefully clasped in his mouth. He felt a moment of panicked guilt as he set it down in front of Bartram, but dismissed the thought. It had been meant for his kits in Branch Clan, but Branch Clan had a lot of kits, and they seemed healthy enough right now. One rainbow snail as a gift to an old friend shouldn't make too much of a difference. Ah! Bartram blinked down at the snail for a moment, his eyes tracing the shell in its glowing colors with interest. Another Branch Clan cat called out in the distance, and Bartram flicked an ear, shooting a nervous glance towards the bushes, then turned back to Crowfeather with a broad smile and a friendly flick of his tail. Of course, I'll be sure to tell everyone it's from you. But you're right, I'd better go now, eh? Bartram snatched up the rainbow snail and whipped around, disappearing into the bushes with a rustle of leaves. Crowfeather watched the spot where Bartram had disappeared for a moment, then finally let out a long sigh and turned back to where the Branch Clan cats were doing their forest training. His paws feeling slightly heavy as the excitement from seeing a Moss Clan cat began to drain away. It was only as he drew closer to Branch Star's voice that Crowfeather realized he had even forgotten to tell Bartram his name. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Warrior Cats Challenge here in Sims 3 with all expansion packs and quite a bit of custom content. And we are here for a very special day with Branch Clan. And so after having the death fish incident in which a lot of Branch Clan feels a fish was just fished out of the water by accident by Trout Shadow and it turned out to be a very deadly fish which they've never really had that issue before unless you count like the sharks that lurk off the shore. Branch Clan is a little bit concerned with how things have turned Turned out. So Branch Star wants to bring his cats over here so that the warriors will have an opportunity to train in forest settings and provide a variety of prey items for the clan to eat. And so that's why they're over here. And it looks like some of the cats are having a little bit more success than others <laughs> at actually hunting. <gasps> what the heck? Oh my gosh! Crowfeather! That's not a brightly colored snake at least, but geez Louise, what are you doing? He's like trying to prove himself. Tell me this. Wow, look at it. I don't think I've ever seen this kind of snake before. Crow feather, that looks really cool. That looks so cool. You should catch it. It totally matches you. I bet the other cats would totally joke about that too. They'd be like, Crow feather, you got one that matches you. And then Moonpaw is over here hunting down a turtle. So that is really awesome. And meanwhile... <laughs> Stonepool, who's over here playing with his sister. So Wildpaw, you have a lot of jealousy issues with your brother being a warrior before you, but here you are encouraging him to do silly goofy, like silly, silly goofy, I guess you call that silly if you swish the words together, playtime instead of hunting. And I just, oh, they're just so silly. But yes, yeah, so Branch Star has gone ahead and he has brought over some of his warriors so that hopefully they can do a little bit of training. Apparently Slate's a nerd now. Well, that's wonderful for you, Slate. But they're doing some training over in the tested glade so this area if you look around is clearly excellent for moss clan to use there's mushrooms there's flowers there's seeds everywhere but branch clan is over here right now with wild paw chasing her brother for one thing branch clan spending a little bit of time in this area instead of moss clan <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry about that. I had to actually delete a kid out of the neighborhoods because he was stuck with his tricycle and kept uh, glitching the game out. So that hiccup done. <gasps> Did she just catch that turtle? Did she really? Yes. All right. So Moonpaw has caught that turtle. She's actually a very good hunter and she does like being a hunter and a fighter. So we'll have to see what we're going to do about that. And Crowfeather caught the snake. So I am pretty darn excited about that. Good job, Crowfeather. And he wants to go and pounce Wild Paw now. So we're going to see what the cats are going to get up to for today. So we're kind of sticking with this section of Branch Clan. We're going to train them up a little bit. We're going to see if they have any luck doing some hunting here in the forest. We'll go ahead and let Moonpaw kind of do a bit more hunting. I think she might be looking at some of the like flowers and some of the seeds curiously, wondering if maybe she should collect those for, for Bear Glow. But she really tends to find what goes on over in like what's scuttling around, what's just waiting to be pounced on. A lot more interesting. Oh, aww, and then it looks like Branch Star and Quail are having a good time. And Wild Paws coming over to groom her dad. What? That's so cool. And then what's going on over here? <gasps> Crowfeather just rejected Stonepaw for, for sharing of tongs. Crowfeather, you're not having a good track record here. This isn't good. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have to just step back and see what he is going to do about these things. You go off and do some stalking and hunting if that's how you're going to behave. And then let's see what Stonepool wants to do. I think I may still call him Stonepaw. That's totally an accident. He wants to become best friends with Moonpaw. So if he just got rejected from one cat for grooming, then let's go ahead and see if Moonpaw will actually share tongues with him instead. And Quilly wants to be best friends with Shellkit, Sandkit, and Glowkit. So let's have him actually come over and catch bugs. I think we might make it. Oh, Moonpaw was going to get a turtle and then Stonepool interrupted her. I don't think she would take that very well. Oh man, but I think we're going to make it so actually when you catch bugs, then they can make the kits very happy. Like we can give the bug to a kit as a gift and we'll fill its hunger a little bit and we'll increase relationship with whoever handed over the, the bug to the kit. I think that would be a really fun way of having them all interact together. Oh, and Wildpaw's hanging out with her dad. Wildpaw wants to sniff Tommy and sniff Robinpaw. So she seems to be thinking a lot about things that are outside of her clan. And I kind of just wanted to spend the day. Stonepool, are you going to be allowed to groom? Is she going to reject you too? Is it because she wants to do some hunting instead? No, no, he can do it. Quail, I calm down. It's not the full moon. And he caught the light bug. Fantastic. But yeah, I kind of wanted just to spend a little bit of time. And it looks like Quail is going to try to train with Wild Paw. Did you catch it? Jeez, a chameleon too? The cats are just on fire, you guys. This is amazing. But spend a little bit of time with Branch Clan, kind of having a quieter moment because we had some very intense moments with the disappearance and possible death, after all, of Trout Shadow. But as far as Branch Star is concerned, Trout Shadow has just wandered off. Maybe after, oh, he got a cockroach. He could give it to one of his kids as a gift. Um, Trout Shadow has just wandered off maybe to chase after a female and Branch Star is really irritated about that. He doesn't feel like the warriors need to be vanishing on him uh, that way and so he wants to see if they can catch a scent of Trout Shadow and really read him the riot act for when they find him again. Um, but so far nobody has uh, even scented so much as a single hair on Trout Shadow's pelt so we'll have to see where that goes. Oh no! And then Moonpaw, she's just really rejecting everybody. Oh but she wants to get a gift for Stonepool. So we'll go ahead and let her do a little bit of stalking. I think that's Moonpaw's way of really showing that she wants to focus on training and hunting. Maybe she's feeling a little divided. Bear Glow is back at home and he's doing okay. He's kind of napping. Apparently he's poking at Sand Kit, probably to tell the kit to be quiet. But Bear Glow is still recovering from his near-death experience with the death fish and it had a severe effect. It was an extremely deadly amount of poison. In fact, I need to make sure all of his inventory is empty right now because we cleaned it out. But I need to make sure we get rid of the assassin beetle um, that we had. I know it's in here somewhere. Or I may, nope, there it is. Uh, there we go. So there goes the assassin beetle. But Bear Glow uh, w did almost die from the poison from the death fish. And as you guys saw, we did not have a any more assassin beetles. That was our last assassin beetle. So Bear Glow is a little bit worn out right now. He's still trying to find his legs and he lost a lot of his hunting skills. He's down to three hunting skill points. Uh, even though you may wonder why a medicine cat would need to be a good fighter. When we do our random generators, I determine the hunting skill to be related to, um, I think we're going to go ahead and have him like sniff the kit kind of as a way of like, I'm going to say he's 
telling Sand Kit off, like, you need to, oh, and there's a wave kit just hanging out over here, as more as a way of, like, being, oh, get out of my way, and then we'll, we'll say, we'll have him sniff all of the kits, because we'll say he walked out, and he's not, like, being social, he's just suddenly being surrounded by kits, and he can't get away, that's kind of hilarious! <laughs> And he's feeling really weak right now, so all of the kids are just like, Bear Glow, Bear Glow, Bear Glow! Are you feeling better? And they're probably bringing him scraps of feathers and moss. Oh, that's adorable! And he's probably, like, irritated, but also surrounded. And their fastest way to get his pelt, like, up on the wall is by by irritating the queens by threatening their kids. So I think Bear Glow would feel a little bit overwhelmed right now. But yes, yeah, so he had a huge loss to his skill points. Um, when I roll the illnesses, I do roll to see how severe the illness are and then if they survive the illness I'm gonna start knocking down the cat's hunting skills because I feel like that is a good balance to everything so we will start just kind of knocking down hunting skills when the cats get sick <gasps> and Moonpaw just improved her hunting skill to level seven sweet I really think that she's kind of rejecting all of the the sharing of tongues because she really wants to be able to train herself up yeah she wants to improve her hunting skill sniff squirrel leap be best friends with Misty Pond and she wants to present a gift to Stonepool. Does she really have anything? Do have we decided Stonepool's favorite food yet? I don't think we have decided Stonepool's favorite food. So maybe it might become what his friend Moonpaw gives him. So I think it would definitely be a fish though. I don't think it would be maybe it would be a three-eyed fish because like three eyes is often associated with like spirituality we'll have to think about that i need to know i want your guys opinion actually on what you think stone pool's favorite gift should be so the thing he really loves and actually the thing that moonpaw really loves so we need to know what moonpaw i'm thinking maybe the luminous salamander which is super rare is probably her favorite gift or that's definitely night frost maybe she has the same taste as her mom maybe not and then Stonepool over here, who is chit-chatting with his dad, he wants to play with another pet. He might he might want to talk to Wildpaw. Can he train with Wildpaw? Let's see, what's she at? He's a little bit better trained, so let's have them train for a minute. And then Wildpaw will probably be taking out a little bit of anger on him. <laughs> like, hey, you got to become a warrior before me. But yeah, today is meant to be more of a day to let the cats kind of tell their own stories in sitting back and seeing what they get up to at this special event where we're kind of coming over into this territory. Also keeping our eyes out because there is a big chance actually that um, we could run into dogs. I have foxes. We're going to be doing a behind the paws very soon if not next Warrior Cats episode where I will be adding in a whole bunch of foxes and showing you guys how to add in foxes. Um, maybe some more stray dogs that I want to put in that actually show up more frequently than strays do. So we're going to be doing a lot of those things and then I'm thinking we might buy this and make this moss or branch clan territory because it used to be moss clan territory it has a lot of aspects of territory that moss clan could probably use more than branch clan but no moss clan cats have really been spotted down here in a long time however it does appear oh Moonpaw just caught a cockroach we can give that to one of the kits as a present but however, it does appear that there's lots and lots and lots of prey in abundance over here because we're finding a lot of stuff. So I don't think Moonpaw is going to give Stonepool a cockroach. Crowfeather just caught a Pygmy Komodo dragon. But yeah, we had some really serious things go down. Oh, did they just become best friends? Ah, ooh, I think Wildpaw is going to try to compete with her, with Moonpool to give her brother a gift. And Quillay just caught a plasma bug. Oh, that's gonna make him popular with his his mate because that always makes his mate very happy. I think Wildpaw is gonna be really sassy though. And maybe try to like pull on Quillay's tail. Like, give me that medical item. Cause she still needs to collect two more medical items before she can become a warrior. At least that's what uh, the requirements are so far. And her father is extremely stubborn. Branch Star is not letting her become a warrior until she does that because he knows she needs to cool her head a little bit and then we'll see what they're doing but yeah she's gonna be really irritated that she was busy like kind of wrestling with stone pool and missed out on catching a plasma beetle because that could have counted as one of her finds 
<laughs> All right, and then I think that she would try to compete actually with Moonpool too at finding something to give her brother as a gift. And so Moonpaw over here, I think I said Moonpool by accident. <laughs> that really was an accident. But Moonpaw over here wants to catch, um, oh dear, and Quillai, are you really going? That's a brightly colored snake, Quillai. Oh man, it's really pretty actually. And again, well, it's kind of brightly-ish colored. It's not really, it's kind of brown actually. So I don't think that would actually be something we have to worry about. But Quillai has a bad habit and he doesn't have the slither stalker yet. How many, how many reptiles has he caught? But Quillai has a bad habit of getting bitten by venomous snakes. How many snakes has he caught altogether? Six, four turtles. So that's four, or that's 10. And then one lizard. So that's 11. And he's only caught 11 out of 20 reptiles then. Fooey. But yeah, quail eye is after this mini python. It's actually brown, so we'll just kind of let that not be a venomous bite. We only roll for venomous bites if they happen to be brightly colored. And there's a lot of brightly colored venomous snakes over at... And again, they're not venomous in the game. A python is not venomous, you guys. I'm just saying. That's how we roll with it. There's no venomous snakes in Sims 3, so we have to kind of adapt. Um, but yeah, I won't roll for that because that's just a brown snake. He does have a bad habit of being bitten by venomous snakes. But yeah, so if Moonpaw over here came over and had the opportunity to give one of the mini, mini things. Oh, and now she's going to catch a plasma beetle. <gasps> I think Wildpaw is going to be so mad. Oh my gosh. Wildpaw is going to be just beside herself to the point where if this is a successful catch, I think we're going to lower the relationship between her and Moonpaw. Oh, wild paw, you poor thing. Branch star or quali, excuse me, you are so lucky that that wasn't a venomous snake. Oh man, if this is gonna be successful, then we're gonna have one very jealous fe like feline with wild paw over here. I don't know how much more she can take. Quail I just improved his- Oh my gosh! Quail I just improved his skill to 10. So he has just become the perfect hunter. And Moonpaw, she did it. Look, look, you can see Wild Wildpaw, Wildpaw just realized what happened. She was busy playing with her brother. And in, in really her and my defense, Wildpaw tries very hard and she did a great job with certain things like leaping after the raccoon. But she really only thrives in those kinds of impulsive situations. And that's not what being a warrior is about. So that's why that's why her leader, Branch Star, gave her the very strict requirement of having to catch those medical items to prove that she can be a rounded, well-rounded warrior. And she just saw that medical item. The two medical items she could have gotten. She wouldn't begrudge the deputy quail eye for getting it. But man, is she going to be mad about Moonpaw getting it. So we're actually going to come in and her relationship. Wow, when did you become best friends with Oakglade? When did that happen? I'm going to have to pay attention to that. But we're going to go ahead and her relationship with uh, Moonpaw. It's gonna go down. It wasn't even, it wasn't really even up there to begin with, but it's gonna be a little bit negative, just a teensy pinch negative. Ooh, she's mad. <laughs> so we'll have to see what happens. And then, you know, you know what I think would rub some salt in the wound a little bit unintentionally? We're gonna have Moonpaw come over. And I think Moonpaw is gonna give this koi fish. I think this koi fish would be what Stonepool would be interested in. It's a fish, it looks like him. It's a fish that looks like him. So I think we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna present it to Stonepool right now. He's gonna stop playing with his sister just to rub some salt in the wound. All right, there we go. Oh boy. And Stonepool, oh boy. And look at Wildpaw. <laughs> look at her walk off. This is what we're doing today, you guys. Kind of building up the way the stories just tell themselves as we study what the cats do, just in the normal course of their daily lives. We're gonna go ahead and is he hungry? He's not hungry. So we're gonna go ahead and have him go ahead and put this object away. So thank you very much, Moonpaw. And she's off to, she, needs, she wants to get a drink. You can't get a drink. Maybe you could eat something. Can you eat this? Can you drop it somewhere nearby and then we'd be able to eat it? That That is a little bit of a struggle when we're out around here. So let's see if we can get her to eat it. And then we'll go ahead and I feel like Stonepool would have had his sister walk off and then, oh, he wants to sniff Bartram. Oh, and he wants to play with Moonpaw. 
Oh, I know what we're gonna do. <gasps> I know what we're gonna do that's gonna make Wildpaw just totally lose it. He'll realize that Moonpaw is hungry, but he's not, so he's gonna give this goldfish to Moonpaw. Dun dun dun. There we go. But yeah, after having the really seriousness of what happened with Misty Pond and Trout Shadow, we're starting to get into some pretty heavy stuff. So I thought today would be a very good day, you guys, to just go ahead and have another light, kind of laid back day. Wild Paws scratching angrily on the scratching post. Moon Paws very happy and thankful for having her little goldfish. We're going to go ahead and let her eat it. Stonepole is going to go try. I think he would try to talk to his sister and she would just not be in the mood right now. So we're going to go ahead and let her do a little bit of stocking and we'll see if maybe she's going to have any luck finding those medical items so we can make her officially into, and we'll have him go ahead and do a little bit of stocking too, make her officially into a warrior or not. I have plans if things, if things go awry. Crowfeather, gosh freaking darn it. I don't know if I, you get, you better catch that because I honestly don't know. Did you catch that snake? You just about gave me a heart attack, Crowfeather. I had like some things in mind for you. You're very important for the next clan. Like it's really, really important you don't die because my precious baby plots are just little seedlings. And I can't make them big and healthy until we actually get there in Warrior Cats episodes because things change from episode to episode. And there you are, sir, biting a venomous snake. <gasps> 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 That's what I have to say to that. And you guys can make what you want out of what I just said too. So, hmm, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave that there. Yeah. Eat the food. That would I think that only counts for a pet bowl. But yeah, you can you can take what you want from what I just said about the next clan. Let's just say I don't want my baby plots stamped on, but that's why it takes me so long to do warriors because the cats are always stomping on my plots and that's okay. That's totally part of the fun of this. This is not a very scripted series. You guys know the drill by now. The black goldfish, which I think is actually one of Crowfeather's favorite gifts. We could give that. What are you doing with all these rainbow snails, Branch Star? And Crowfeather did give a rainbow snail, physically gave it to Bartram. So Bartram does have the rainbow snail right now and I'm sure he's going to go tell Rob, like, you know, Rob and Pa and Honey Wish that he got the Rainbow Snell from Crowfeather, even though he doesn't know Crowfeather's name and just darted off with it. I'm, I'm sure that's what Bartram's going to do with that, right, you guys, right? So we'll have to see how that goes. And then Crowfeather, we're going to go ahead and have you get presented with some food to eat, maybe? We'll have him pee and then feed him from his brother. Like, his brother will give him a, a good fish fish in just a second. So, all right. And then how are the kids all doing? They are doing pretty darn well. They are guarding some food. And it looks like Bear Glow is wiggling in and trying to get a little bit of food. Yo, he's goofing around with a kit. I think... Ironically, today is Berglow being followed around by the kids' day. So the kids and everybody else seem to be doing totally fine. Oh, snuggle with the kids. Yes, don't hiss at Slate for crying out loud, Dawn Step. You are such a sassy rump. And we'll go back over to our Branch Clan cats who are training in the forest and continue their forest training. But yeah, I love it. I love the way... <laughs> that our stories can change from day to day and I really appreciate you guys with sticking with me because it's very hard to come up with a cohesive story that makes sense and that follows any coherent anything that even seems remotely like a plot when you guys have seen how it works I change everything from a day to day basis like I did not anticipate Wildpaw Ooh, there's a little chipmunk oh I'm sorry little chipmunk but Wildpaw really needs this oh my gosh it looks like it's sinister it's like run for it Run for it! Fun fact, I, I actually watched a chipmunk climb a tree out of my office today, you guys. Of like one of these little guys. I saw his little furry rump and I saw his little tail flash by. Now, why is this kind of amazing that I watched a chipmunk climb a tree? I'm on the second story. So I didn't know chipmunks climb trees all the way up at the second story. And I saw that today. But yeah, we'll go ahead and let her catch that. Apparently no rare medical items yet. And I also don't know if she wants to give her brother a gift. That was what I was saying earlier. Because uh, Wild Paw may find it a little bit awkward. Oh gosh, that's an even better shot. Sorry, it's just so cute. But Wild Paw may find it really awkward because she would want to show up Moon Paw, right? And be like, oh, well, she gave him like that koi fish, which I think is now going to be Stonepool's favorite thing to eat. So I'm going to give him something too, right? 
Well, the only things that Wildpaw has in her inventory to really share with her brother are a bunch of feathers, maple leaves, snake skins, a spider, and a kissing grommy. And a kissing grommy is kind of like the w thing you give to a cat to sort of flirt with them a little bit. So she can't exactly give that to her brother. So I think she's a little embarrassed, but she might give the chipmunk to her brother. And let's go ahead and focus on these ones. So how are you guys doing? Are you eating? Are you eating crow feather? All right, crow feather, what are you doing? Did you react positively? And, you know, that's kind of the thing is Branch Star, as the clan leader, uh, noticed that Crowfeather is getting hungry. So he fed Crowfeather. And we actually need to go and fill up our, our stuff pretty soon. And Crowfeather needs to decide what he's going to do with all of the stuff he's hoarding in his inventory. He has a personal catch that he has put over next to Branch Clan. And he needs to decide if he is going to empty that personal catch for Branch Clan. And I think by now they would assume that he would be turning over all of the prey that they, they bring in. Like I think that's what Branch Star is assuming. Is that any prey he caught today, so all of this new stuff, he's assuming is going to show up in Branch Clan's prey pile. And if it doesn't, we're going to have to see just what Branch Star is going to think about that and how he's going to react. So let's pop over to Wild Star. Wild Star? No, that was really just because I was saying Branch Star. Wild Paw. <laughs> Oh my goodness, and I actually saw on Twitter tonight that somebody's writing a fanfic about her and that made me so excited. All right, she's got her hunting skill climbing back up. You guys may remember she lost a lot of her hunting skill after she had even a snake bite that she almost didn't survive. Oh gosh, and where are you going, Crowfeather? In such a rush like that. Why don't you go ahead? I think he was actually, let's send him over here and see if he can have any luck catching a frog. I think that's one of the things he's secretly super duper excited about maybe finding over here. Today is a frog to eat. All right, Branch Star, are you having any luck? And then let's see how Moonpaw's doing. Oh, Moonpaw's over here hanging out with uh, Quail Eye. So I guess Quail Eye is trying... Why are you freaking out? He's freaking out at the weird two-leg trash can. Run away, Quail Eye. <laughs> He's a very stressed out cat. You know, when you have a lot of secrets and guilt, guilt that's kind of crushing down on you, I could see how you could become a very stressed out cat. All right, and Moonpaw... I really think she would try to think, like, is there anything she could take in terms of medicalness back to, back to Bear Glow? Because she just saw Robin Paw, who she got along with very well. And you're allowed to kind of become friendly with medicine cats between clans, usually, even if you're not a medicine cat yourself. A dragonfish? What's a dragonfish doing inside of this pond? Huh. You know, Crowfeather catches dragonfish a lot. He's the only cat I know who does, actually. And Wildpaw caught another Wom rat. But we might we might look into that in a little bit then. Branch Star, are you just, like, confused? You need to be catching some stuff, too. All right. And then Moonpool, or Moonpool. Pfft, that's really just because I'm tired. I'm sorry, guys. Moonpaw is still looking for prey. A robot fish? What is in this pond? Dragonfish? Robot fish? Oh, the crow feather catches the most unique stuff. And then, like, otter slip tends to catch the most medical fish. And this is just, this is getting, this is getting kind of funny. And then there's a cardinal. So Wildpaw is catching, like, quite a few things. But she's not really catching any prey that would be useful for her medical item quest. Branch Star, I'm just, I need to have you come over here. Oh, Misty Pond just caught a turtle. I didn't ex anticipate that. I need to have Branch Star just come over here. And then I think Moonpaw would actually look around a little bit and try to figure out if any of these things... Oh, she wants to talk to Wildpaw. Oh, and she wants to sniff Crowfeather. That is new. Crowfeather. Crowfeather, do you have any wants about, like, anything? Um, that was me just misclicking. No, Crowfeather still just wants to be friends with Briarstock, Lionstar, and sniff Robinpaw. Hmm... Hmm. Well, he's almost done with his hunting. And then, let's see, blue flax. I don't know if she would know if it's useful for anything, but we're going to go ahead and say that Moonpaw over here is a little bit curious about medical stuff, and she feels a little bit guilty for Bear Glow being, uh, being ill. So we're going to say... She collects this blue flax to give to Bear Glow. So we're going to go ahead and pick it. And then I'll send Slate home. And yeah, we're just going to say, because 
every now and then, we don't do this very often, but every now and then, a cat can gather up a medical item, even if they aren't a medicine cat. We do, we do it very rarely, but I think that it's okay in this case. All right, then I'm going to have her come over and sniff crow feather. See how crow feather's doing? Doing good. Wild paw. Let's have wild paw give the gift to her brother now. So, oh, and her brother's already taking a nap. That's not what you're supposed to do. All right, come over here. There we go. Quayle, what do you want to do? Probably go back home. He still just wants to go back home to his kits. He is pretty darn dedicated. Can you catch this or is this like under something? Because he could probably catch these termites. And then we could have him give the little termites to his to his kit. Like one of his kits. He only has two kits in quotation mark. But he seems more interested in shell kit and sand kit. And a little bit scared but interested in glow kit. You aren't forgetting, sir, the about glow kit sibling. You know, coral kit. You know, your kit, your kit, your kit with your mate. Hmm. You know, I, I, well, actually, now that I think about it, <laughs> Otter Slip? Uh, yeah, Otter Slip is worried about Glow Kit. So Otter Slip is interested in Glow Kit, at least. I was feeling a little guilty. There's so many kits, but now is not the time for them to be kind of forgotten between each other. All right, and let's see. Moonpaw uh, wants to talk with Wildpaw. Wildpaw, you come over. We're going to have her give the, the gift to her brother. And then I think Moonpaw might try to talk to her. But I think Wildpaw is really irritated. She's not in the mood for this. So we're going to kind of push some buttons today. I'm a little nervous to do this. But we are going to push a couple buttons. So she's going to give the chipmunk to her brother. Because she's very jealous. Not like of her brother a little bit. Because he, well a lot. Because he's a warrior now. But also of the way that her brother puts up with like flat faced stupid looking moon paw all the time and why does she always like get his attention why is he looking at her like that and so she does not like moon paw and thinks that she's just a whole lot of worthless and gets too much attention oh and quill i just got the termite wonderful we can give that to one of his kids awesome and then let's see be nuzzled by his sister so stonepool just accepted the chipmunk from his sister but he wants to play with Moonpool right now. And Branch Star just caught another plasma bug. And Wildpaw had zero luck with that all day. That's actually really telling and kind of awesome. So I'm actually going to have him put the chipmunk away. And then I'm going to have Moonpaw try to socialize with Wildpaw. So that they can socialize. Because it looks like she wants to try to mend bridges a little bit. And get a little bit closer to Stonepool. But Wildpaw... I'm going to do something a little bit dangerous and have her hiss at Moonpaw. And hopefully it won't lead to a fight. Alright, come on. Alright, and Stonepool's going to go ahead and go to sleep. Careful, Stonepool. This might turn out not so great. So we got to keep an eye on this. I'm so glad that none of the cats are diving into the yellow while we do this. There we go. Alright. Tensions are rising between these two females and we'll have to see how things turn out because fights can be quite intense and just as a um, Preparatory aside if you guys think we should make it so that cats who are in the same clan and get in a fight together uh, If we should have a special random generator for that because there are fights between clan mates sometimes But usually they're not super violent then let me know and we'll have perhaps a different generator for clan fights uh, in like inter clan fights then we'll have a special generator for fights on patrols like if you're fighting another clan because you bump into each other on patrol because in the books you're not really supposed to kill the cats while you're on patrol fights that's very bad if it happens and then we'll have a fight for if it's just straight out aggression and war so i might make three generators so that the effects that way if wild paw decides to try to beat the living the living fur off of moon paw for some reason then we will lower the chance of her breaking bones or killing moon paw a bit just to be a little more realistic i think that's a good idea but all right, so that's done. So Wildpaw is probably going to go off and angrily pee in this direction. And Moonpaw doesn't seem too phased by her behavior. So that seems okay. And I think everything should be all right for our Branch Clan cats now. So we'll just let them get home because I'm sure everything's been fine over there. Quail Eye, come quickly! Sea Whisper's voice cut through the quiet crickets and croaking frogs of the glade, startling all the Branch Clan cats who had been training there all day. 
They had just been about to head back to the Branch Clan camp when the Grey Queen burst through the bushes, her sides heaving with exhaustion from her frantic race. Quailai stiffened at the panic in her voice, his eyes going wide with fear. Sea Whisper staggered, gasping as her eyes locked with Quailai. It's Glowkit! He's having another attack! <laughs> 